All right, guys. So we're here today with my good friend, Derek Beeler, an owner of an Allstate agency in Goleta, uh, one of my favorite insurance agents here in Santa Barbara, and a good friend. Our kids uh, went to school to with each other last year, right? Yeah. For a couple years. That's how we first met one another. But he does do a lot of business here in town, and he's here to talk to us a little bit more about the state of insurance in our town and maybe comment a little bit about California. But first, before we get there, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm from originally from Santa Monica, born and raised, you know, a beach kid. Um, lived there my whole life. And uh, I moved out to Santa Barbara in about 2019. Okay. Uh, before moving out, I got into the insurance business because I was a freelance bookkeeper and had a bunch of different clients. And an Allstate agent reached out to me and asked if I would look over her books. So I looked over her books and I was like, wow, you're doing good business making here. Making good money. I'm making good money. So, uh, you know, kind of like, how can I be down? She took me under her wing, taught me the ropes. Within a couple of months, I was licensed. Um, another six months after that, I was like the top producer in her office. And then I had my eyes on the big prize. I, I wanted to be the boss. So I had the job opportunity up here in Santa Barbara, moved the fam up and uh, worked under the agent that I, of the, of the agency that I now own for about a year and, wow. you know, got to see like her weaknesses and strengths <clears throat> and, you know, kind of put my name out there for the customers. And then I took over December, 2020. Wow. Perfect time. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. That's impressive. So it didn't take very long to get to own you know, the business and keep your, you know, keeping your eyes on the prize, making things happen. That's uh, very impressive. I like that. So thanks for being here, man. Good job. I just want to kind of dive right into the topic um, that's been circling around, I would say a lot of people's minds, especially homeowners and realtors here in town is what's going on with insurance in the state of California, man. Everyone's talking yeah. about it. Uh, the state of California insurance wise is um, kind of in a crisis stage you know um covid i know it's you know the thing that we brought up in the past but on the insurance side it's kind of catching up to us okay um the cost you know the cost of materials to rebuild um the amount of claims over the last couple few years have been really high the population in california is high a lot of new drivers a lot of new home buyers and um we've had some catastrophes so we're kind of just you know we're kind of right in the middle of the storm right now and it, it's hard on everybody it's hard on you know clients it's hard on homeowners it's hard on agents it's hard on anybody in the insurance agency right all the way up to the top um so Right now, I feel that one of the main contributors is the, the claims, the amount of money that insurers have paid out versus the amount of money they brought in. Okay. So whenever something like that happens, changes slowly begin to happen. And then next thing you know, big changes happen. We have insurers pulling out of California. You have non-admitted carriers that don't want to do business in California. So we kind of, you know, we kind of get a bad rep as far as getting insured in California, but there are options and, you know, I don't see this lasting, but it's just, we're definitely in, in the, the thick of it. Huh? Yeah. Big okay. time. That's interesting because, you know, here in Santa Barbara being in, you know, small town, but a lot of our neighborhoods do have some, you know, fire hazards, you know, and it's one of those things that, <clears throat> I mean, I haven't personally seen it start to slow sales down in those neighborhoods, but I would imagine that, you know, it's, it's, it's gotta be a topic of conversation. I know if I have a listing coming up in that, in one of those areas, it's the, you're going to be the first call that I make is right. like where we have with insurance on this property, you know? So I'm going to dive right into this next question I have before I start diving deeper into the real estate side of it is, is, is what should a homeowner do if they're getting a call right now or a letter in the mail saying that they're not going to be renewed? Like, let's just dive into something to help out somebody. Like, well, what should you do if you're in that position? First thing to do is to act on it. Take it seriously. Don't think it's just another le another letter from your insurer. You know, you gotta have to really act on it. And it depends on what type of letter it is. Are they non-renewing you because they're not writing any more new business or they're not 
you know, they're trying to decrease their risk or are they non-renewing you because certain items around your, your home that need to be remedied um, in order to be compliant with, with um, the guidelines of underwriting. So, you know, you have those two categories and if it's the first one, meaning that they're just not writing any more home business or they don't want any more home business, then shop around, you okay. know, hit the ground running, <laughs> shop around. And first and foremost, talk to your friends, talk to your neighbors, see who's insuring them, see if they had any problems. And then, you know, do research online because okay. a lot of stuff you hear online or in the news may be accurate, but not 100%. You know, you may recall Allstate pulled out of California for home business. Right, right? I heard that. I heard that. I got maybe a million calls, people walking in that weren't even my in my book of business asking me about this, which it is accurate. We're not writing on Allstate paper, but Allstate is not a captive agency. So we have other options. We have, you know, A-plus rated carriers that we can write with. We're not writing on Allstate paper anymore, so... That's one thing you, you have to, you know, do your own research, you know, your home is your asset, you put a lot of money into it, or you're going to be putting a lot of money into it. So you kind of have to almost treat it like a child. For sure. Well, especially here at Santa Barbara, I mean, it, it is, it is like a child for most people here worth a few million dollars. So right, it's definitely right. something that you got to take very seriously. So Allstate is still writing in Santa Barbara. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. Just not on Allstate paper. Right. Okay. I like that. So that means you have other carriers that you have. The ability to insure through. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So diving right into that, <clears throat> if someone was canceled, um, they're not going to be renewed. Best bet, talk to some friends in the neighborhood to see who they're being insured to, or reach out to someone like yourself for help and see if you could help them out. Right. Right. Okay. I like that. All right. Perfect. What would be an example of one of those other options that are available to you right now to write somebody if they've been canceled? Um... So first, I would lo like to see their cancellation letter mm -hmm. and see if, you know, the way I'm different than other agents, I like to say is, I'm always looking out for your best interest. I'm not, your back's never going to be against the I wall like that. trying to, you know, I'm pushing policies down your throat, you know? I found it easy, the easiest in my job if I educate my clients because it makes my job easier down the line. And it's like going to your mechanic, you know, you go to your mechanic, they're like, oh, you know, you need a new alternator, you're this, that, and you don't know, you're, unless you're a mechanic. Right. But if you're educated going into your mechanic, then you kind of have an idea of the work that needs to be done. Right. And you don't, you're not gonna feel like you're getting ripped off. Got it. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just run it through my system. I have a quoting platform that can quote maybe five different carriers at one time. And I go down the list and I can compare coverages, premiums, and see what's the best fit. Uh, once I do that, I provide the client with options. And most of the time, it's going to be accompanied by a California Fair Plan. Okay. So can you tell the audience a little bit more about Fair Plan? Because it definitely seems like it's something that we are dealing with more and more here in town, Santa Barbara. And maybe for someone listening, they may not know what California Fair Plan is. Yeah, so California Fair Plan is strictly a fire policy. Okay. It only covers fire-related perils. And it's very cut and dry. You put in there, you can tailor it a little bit more than a regular homeowner's policy, meaning you can state the value of your personal property. It's not a percentage. Um, the loss of use, um, down to the dwelling, other structures, a lot of stuff that a lot of those components are automatically, you know, calculated into a regular homeowner's policy. Um, but, but only fire, only fire. Okay. There's no so liability, no liability, no, no um, if a plumbing pipe ruptures inside the home and floods the house, then what? Then you're either going to pay for it yourself out of pocket, or if you have a wraparound policy, supplemental policy, um, that usually go hand in hand with a fair plan. Okay. Um, that normally you can only get a wraparound if you can only get um, a wraparound if you have a California fair plan policy in place. Got it. They don't want to, you know, they won't write it. They won't write it. Okay. Because it's not, it's not really insuring 100% of all right, the things exactly. that could go wrong on the home from an insurance perspective. Exactly. Okay. Compared and the fair plan gets a, a bad rap, you know, for the pricing of it. And, you know, when you pay for something, whether it's clothes or a nice meal, you expect to get 
an abundance of whatever you're paying for, where the California fair plan is more, you're going to get exactly what you pay for. Right. Even though the premium may be a little bit higher, maybe you have a premium on the side with the homeowner. So your premiums are stacking up. So whenever that happens, people get a little nervous and okay. they start, you know, talking down about the fair plan. But when you're out of options, you know, what's, what's, what's more expensive? Yeah. What's more expensive right? self-insuring or California fair plan. Exactly. I like that. Okay. Interesting. That's interesting. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, uh, I guess, the negative connotation of fair plan. I'm just going to ask you point blank, just because I want to know too, is are there any real like negatives about it? If someone wants to be you know, in a wildfire, or, you know, in a fire and their home burn, like what is the real con? Is there a con or is it just people mm -hmm. just kind of their experience talking about why they don't like it? Like in this time, you know, this time we live in now, everything, everybody wants something right now. They want it now. They want answers right now. They want to know they're protected right now. The underwriting process for the fair plan is a little bit more tedious. Um, they can deny an application for, you know, a lot of minimal things. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you're working with an agent that is looking out for you and not just trying to push a policy because if it gets denied, then the process has to start completely over. Got it. Um, so you want to be in good hands. <laughs> Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so if you aren't in good hands, you got to hit up Derek Beeler, Allstate Agency. Where's your um, your your office at? Can you give them the address? Just so uh, it's five seven one five Kaya Real okay. in Galita, next to Nika Ramen, the Trader Joe's, Kyle's Kitchen. And I saw Sunshine Cafe is coming soon, right next door. Yeah, they've been jackhammering for the past couple of days next door. So. You know, it's it. always fun writing policies with someone jackhammering <laughs> next door to you, right? So I have another question for you, man. As a realtor, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, 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 and I'm switching gears from fair plan to another question that I often get asked. So um, earthquake insurance, is that something you see that's common to add on to a policy here in California? It's an optional coverage, right? Completely optional by law. We have to offer it. Okay. Um, with every quote we send out, you know, just as, as it's, it's an option, right? And, you know, Insurance is, I'm in the business of what ifs. What ifs, yeah. What if this happened? What if that happened? What if an earthquake happens? Right. You know, earthquakes, you know, you hear them on the news, you feel a little rattle, kids get scared. But in the event of a big earthquake, which I'm like traumatized from the oh, Northridge, <laughs> Northridge earthquake. Oh, no, yeah, I guess if you're back in the LA. day, yeah. I was in, I lived in Northridge and it was like any tremor like sets me off. So yeah. you want to just, you know, a lot of people want to spend a lot of money on things, you know, right. their car, their home, you know, and you got to like protect your assets right. all around. And if you're going to be all in on getting a very nice home, be all in on the protection, right? You know, get that warranty. Yeah. You don't yeah. see many people in a Ferrari in the drive through at McDonald's. Right. 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 Um, so you want to just, it's optional coverage completely. And the thing, the misconception people have with earthquake insurance is the deductible is percentage based. So a lot of people say, okay, well, how am I going to come up with 15% of the deductible for earthquake damage? Mm. You know, and that kind of, this is like the main thing I see and, and, and me educating the clients is you never, you're not coming out of pocket to get your, your, you know, the damages paid, they'll, they'll cut you a check less, the, less the 15% less. Got it. Yeah, so they're not actually taking, the, they're not having to put the money right, out. Right. Got it. And okay. of course, like the premium does affect, you know, it jumps quite a bit on the percentage wise, you know, 10%, 15%. The most common is about 15%. Okay. But it's something that, you know, people, whenever there's a little earthquake or a little rumble, people will call and they'll say, I need earthquake insurance. Usually after an earthquake, like the one in Ojai. Mm -hmm. Which we felt here. I was, yeah. I was in a movie theater and I could feel it. So, um, Whenever that happens, there's a moratorium and you can't write policies. Oh, interesting. And the one from that, that Ojai one, the moratorium just got lifted uh, a few days ago. How long is the moratorium? Normally a month? About a month. Wow. About a month, I depending on, on the severity of it. But, wow. you know, same wow. with fire, same with flood. Like, you know. Same thing, moratorium, they're not going to yeah. write anymore. Interesting. So what about if, for example, just since we're talking about this, the earthquake happened in Ojai, so is there like a longer moratorium in Ojai than there would be in Santa Barbara? Mm, Any idea? It depends. I okay. think it's county by county. Okay. Yeah. 
Got it. Got it. Interesting. All right. Well, hey, I didn't know anything about earthquake insurance so you, until you asked. Just one last question to wrap that up. <clears throat> is it expensive? I guess that's something that always people ask me. Is it expensive, earthquake insurance? It's a great question because compared to what? Okay. Is it expensive compared to not having an earthquake? Sure. Is sure. it expensive in the if there's a huge earthquake? No. Mm. That it causes a lot of damages to your property. And the good news is like on the new builds and, and um, you know, a lot of homes that are built, I think, before. In 1978 or something. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, they don't have like the bolt and brace. Well, that, I was going to ask you a question because I've sold, you know, houses here in Santa Barbara, you know, built in 19, 1900s. You know, one that I did sell did not have anchor anchor bolts. It wasn't right. bolted to the foundation. Will they insure something like that or you have yeah. to do that? Yeah, they will insure it, but you get a discount. If you if have you the bolt, bolt and brace, yeah. up to bolt. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. So the good news is like a lot of the homes that are like new builds are. Yeah. Know. They're all bolted to the foundation. Right. Right. Okay. Interesting. All right. Right on. Okay. Well, Hey, real quick to another question. Um, going back to fair plan and we talked briefly about the cons and I just kind of wanted to touch back on something I just thought of right now. Fair plan how does that work? So I read something online that like all the insurance agencies are paying into it or can you explain a little bit more as to who, who insures fair plan? Like, is it the state so, of California that's putting up the money or? So the fair plan, believe it or not, is, is, you know, reinsured by all the carriers in California. Okay. So a lot of, since the home, the, the homeowner market of insurance is kind of low right now. A lot of people are like, oh, I'll just get a fair plan. I'll get a fair plan. Well, you know, the carriers in the state of California like sort it out. But since the fair plan is being reinsured by all of these carriers in the event of a huge catastrophe fire, um, then we're back to where we are now, you know, because that means that the fair plan will, will pay it out, but it's costing each carrier money to pay that out because they're reinsuring them. So I wonder if that's part of the reason why some of them have stopped writing policies and you know around fire hazard areas you know since they're going to be exposed to that risk anyway yeah, yeah. i'm not too sure i'm not too sure yeah I, i'm not either and we're just speculating at that point but it's interesting you know the whole situation and what's going on here in california it's got a lot of people rattled so again switching gears going back from fair plan sorry i had to go back because i just thought about that about that question but if someone's uh, looking to be insured, what's kind of the turn time right now? Is that has that slowed down? If someone needs a quote, is it taking longer to get quotes back from Allstate, or is it pretty fast? Like it's it's pretty fast uh, on the homeowner side. Say by miracle, I can write one that doesn't need a fair plan. I can write it, quote it, bind it the same day. Awesome. Okay. Thirty days down the line, they'll do a exterior inspection. If anything gets flagged, they'll notify me. I'll notify the client. When there is a fair plan attached to it, you there's going to be a little bit more of a time, but not too much. Maybe I'll write, I'll write the wraparound policy, get the ball rolling on the fair plan, submit the pictures. Um, and from that point, it's about maybe five, five to seven days for the fair plan to release the, the quote then I can bind that the same day. I mean, okay, that's good to know. So I was just kind of thinking about something. I'm just going to ask you just because um, I've only done it twice now. Maybe it was written in insurance contingencies. If I, if I know I'm going to have a hard time finding insurance on a property, are you actually having any realtors contact you? Like to say, hey, I need to get insurance quoted on this property ASAP because I don't know if it could be insured. Is that something? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and it's usually when they know they're close to closing. Right. So they're close to closing. They want to make sure that they're, you know, a good, a good agent, you know, a yeah. good realtor would be like, let me just be upfront with my client and say, okay, we got everything done here, but I want to inform you the insurance is going to be this, this amount, which, you know, when you're trying to sell a house dollar, do, it matters dollar amounts, yeah. you know, they're, yeah. they're like talking points. So I don't, I, I don't. I don't get hit hit up as much as I used to yeah. um, before this like crisis stage, but I do get a couple of um, I do have a couple of realtors in my back pocket that will always hit me up and ask, and sometimes they're you know maybe cross checking other insurance companies like hey I got a guy over at 
whatever, Joe Blow's insurance company. And he says that we can't do this and this. And my realtors know that I'm big on like educating and, you know, just pointing people in the right direction. Okay. All right. Well, hey, sounds like it's always good to ask up front, right? I think yeah. that's, if any realtor is listening to this <laughs> right now, definitely find out. Call call Derek and find out if you can be uh, insured. If you have a listing coming and you're not sure, it's definitely worth the call to ask. I am going to just kind of fire off a couple series of uh, questions here to you that I feel could be beneficial to any homeowner or home buyer listening. Um, <clears throat> so let's just kind of take it from the top real quick. First question I have for you is um, when it comes around claims in a home, when we sell a home to someone else, do, do, does the previous claims on a homeowner, right, affect the new buyer when someone's buying a house? No, no, not, not necessarily. Okay. Um, it'll always come up in our system. I see it more so with condos. Um, and usually because claims fall under, like, not the unit number, but the, the street address with condos. So... There was a water loss here, you know? Right. Does that jump the premium up for the new no. owner, for the new buyer? No. No? Does that follow the, the homeowner if they go somewhere else? Yes. That history? Yeah. The okay. history will follow follow the homeowner, but um, the new buyer shouldn't have any problems with it. Okay. You know? Because if it's, say, the home got flooded, then, you, you know, it kind of helps out because we know that you're going to need a flood policy. Got it. You know, if it's in a high fire zone, we know that. Yeah, that's we stuff. usually know that right up front, right? Okay, I was always curious. I wasn't sure. Like, if it doesn't follow the buyer, I mean, I guess maybe from a point of disclosure, it's probably more important to know what happened to the house. Right, it's like a salvage title. Yeah, on the right. Car, what know? happened, right? Did, right? And was it done? Was the work done accordingly? You know, what type of <clears throat> documentation do you have to prove there was a mold cert or whatever? But I was always curious if it penalizes the home for the future no. buyer. So, okay, cool. All right, next question. I like this. Um, quickly. What is an umbrella policy? We hear that a lot, right? And who who needs something like an umbrella policy? Does a normal homeowner need an umbrella policy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yes. All right. So I'll tell you. Tell start, I'll tell I you. Like so I'll start I like by telling you sure about that. who doesn't necessarily. Who doesn't need it? I like that. Say there's a young man, single, rents an apartment, um, doesn't have any assets, drives, you know, normal car, great driving record, does not need one. But then uh, come come along a family who has you know maybe a couple of rental homes, has a boat, jet skis, an um, umbrella policy just blankets the client as far as liability claims that are brought against them. Liability claims, okay. Right. So we all know lawyers. You know they smell blood in the water, and you know you can tap somebody on the bumper, and you know what? Next thing you know, their necks hurting. Whatever lawyers like, okay, let's uh. The lawyer will try to get information, try to see if that the person who hit you has like multiple homes. So they know how much money to go after you for. And, you know, each each auto policy has, uh, you know, li bodily injury limits and they're, they, they have to have a minimum underlying limit to activate the umbrella policy. So say you had 250, 500 on bodily injury. The umbrella will not kick in until those limits are exhausted. Mm. Same on a home. If there's 300,000, which is, you know, the most common underlying requirement for a million dollar umbrella. Um, so you, when you purchase a umbrella policy, you're actually getting more, you coverage. have more, more liability, more coverage. liability like coverage. You get a million dollar umbrella policy. Something happens on one of your properties. You actually have 1.3 million in coverage. Got it. Um, so it's extra protection. It's extra protection and umbrella policies are not expensive. You know, okay. they're not expensive for the protection that you get. And if you own a home, I think it's very important to have one. So they're like in addition to your existing policy. Right. Okay. I didn't know that. So that's interesting. In yeah. addition to provides extra coverage from liability perspective. And if you own any sort of Bo multiple uh, assets, yeah, multiple you should assets. have an umbrella You just want to policy. protect your assets. You Got know? it. I like that. I yeah. like that. And you offer that? At Allstate? Yeah. Oh, there you go. So if you're in need of an umbrella policy, contact Derek Beeler and you will be in good hands. I like that. All right. <clears throat> Next question, man. Moving on. How often should homeowners review and update their insurance policies to ensure that they are adequately protected? What do you recommend? Well, a lot of homeowners, what they'll do is they'll have a policy in place that they've had since, you know, 
since they first bought the house 30 years ago (laughs) and insurance you know companies love to send mail out you know this is this this is our new product this is what we have coming up your bills do you know everything you can think of but when you get that renewal packet Mm -hmm. it's important it's it's a lot of paper in there but i know i'm not sure with other carriers but i believe with with allstate every time they send out a renewal packet they have the last page of it is a property property detail page and it kind of breaks down like you know flooring windows countertops anything you can think of because a lot of people renovate their homes right so upgrades yeah upgrades upgrades that you've done to the house and i i have I get a list, I run an audit every month to see who's renewing mm. in the next 40 days. So renewals usually go out about 40 days beforehand. So I always, you know, send an email or a call. Did you get your renewal packet? Let's discuss, you know? And even if they don't want to discuss, at least I put it in their mind, like, hey, the renewal packet should yeah, be here. Take a look at it. Look take at a look at it. Close, yeah, closer. You know? And, you know, claims what a lot of people, the misconception a lot of people have is like, I don't have receipts for the snowboard I bought in 99, but I have, or my golf clubs. It's always important. And maybe you set a date every time you get your renewal, just to do like a video document what you have in your house video. Okay. Cause they're not looking for how much you paid for. They're not looking, they just want proof of ownership. Proof, okay. Whether it's a picture of, of $5,000 mountain bike that you had that got stolen. They right. want to know that it's yours, you know? Right. Okay, I like that. It's a good tip. Take yeah. the video camera. We all have video cameras in our pocket. Video yeah. record the house. Video record the house, the garage where you keep, you know, your your stuff and just. Does that go over jewelry as well? Like if I had a, a very expensive timepiece or something. That's when you want to have like a, like. So it does like a lot of homeowners policies do cover like lump sum in jewelry, mm-hmm. but there's scheduled personal property where you would have to have an appraisal, whether it's, you know, an engagement ring, some heirlooms, a nice watch. And we only, we'll only insure it for that set amount if their appraisal is within two years. Okay. So it kind of keeps you um, on your toes, especially if you have jewelry to get it appraised more than, you know, maybe every three or four years to get it appraised. So then it's insured for the right amount. Okay. The price of gold goes, I used to be in the jewelry business. Yeah. So the price of gold goes up and down all the time. Right. So. And that'll keep you protected. So yeah. not not only reviewing your homeowner's insurance policy, you know, modifying if you did any upgrades, but also appraisal on jewelry, something yeah. that simple. Yeah, and you it's, know? you know, it's, like I said, you know, people want things now, 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 right. but take the time. Take well, the that's time. the thing, right? No one wants it. No, it, it, it sounds like a pain, right? It's a lot of time that you don't really want to invest, but when something goes wrong or you lose that engagement ring or, or someone yeah. steals something to watch or whatever it's like yeah. man it's just something that small and make if, all the, if the first thing you think about when something goes wrong is i should have I had that uh, then you probably the should, then you probably should have the coverage that's the worst dude that is the worst <clears throat> i'm due for an appraisal on a piece of jewelry or something thanks for thanks for uh, letting me know that all right cool another question man i really like the way this is going so <clears throat> You talked a little bit about insurance inspections. I didn't know that there was a thing. I thought these guys just kind of drive by in their car and just glance at the house and keep going. Or maybe that's what it was prior to everything that's going on in California. What steps should a homeowner take to prepare for that inspection? Are there, there, there steps yeah, you can there take? steps. And the first step is tapping into common sense. Okay. You got to tap into common sense. So you don't, you know, they usually notify you about two or three weeks before the inspection is going to happen. Usually it happens the same time. And you can always reach out to your agent. When was my inspection last year or the year before that? So you kind of have an idea when they're coming to inspect. You don't want to have, you know, piles of wood laying around next to like flammable. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. You want to make sure your trees are trimmed. And... I used to get a lot of kickback when, when there was, there wasn't a market. I mean, where there wasn't so much limited market for homeowners, mm-hmm. people were like, Oh, well, why do I have to do this? Why should I have to do this? But now when rates are going up and, and it's hard to get an insurance policy, people are a little bit more aware now. Right. So, you know, it's just the common sense stuff, you know, things keep your, your you don't want, tree limbs growing tree limbs, um yeah. you know the big thing now that's on inspection reports that is like probably the biggest ticket item is deck the decks um the material that the decks made out of mm. and if your eaves are boxed in okay 
What about with, patios? Just out of curiosity, because that's attached to a house, I'm sure. Right? Uh, the patio is not so much. It's like an extension of, you know, anything embers can go under or, you know, the eaves so that are boxed in. Or that, eaves. And those are like the big ticket items because you can't really get around that. Mm. You know, you can't like, like a tree trim, you can trim the tree, but box and eaves with, you know, fiber cement or non-flammable flammable materials, that'll help you pass. And I've had people that are like, I'm not doing that. Okay, then, you know, you can shop around and see and they'll take what I've told them and they'll ask the new agent. They're like, yeah, that, that they're going to inspect that. Mm. So it's, it's just a matter of, you know, doing what's going to protect you in right. the event of a catastrophe. Right. And then once they cancel you, if you didn't do the suggested work, it's not like you could, can, can you do the work and then they'll reinsure you? Like if you've missed your no, window? No, they, they give you enough time. They no, but I've time. had, okay. you know, okay. I've had people who've had, you know, they couldn't find their roof guy or, or they were so backed up, but as long as they get a start date invoice saying that the work's going to start here and it's going to be finished on this date, then what they'll do is they'll lift that with all state, at least they'll lift that non-renewal as long as they have that. Um, and of course it has to be like a license, right? License bond insured contractor show proof that you have the yeah. contract signed, ready to start. Right. Exactly. Okay. So once you have that, then that non-renewal will get lifted. Okay. And then what they'll do is, uh, come your next renewal they'll make sure it was that done. that was done and if not then then they cancel you huh? yeah interesting okay okay all right cool well, let me do the last uh question here that i have for you man again thanks for being here and you know Thank giving you. us all this information i feel like i get smarter every time i do one of these i love <laughs> it so <clears throat> all right quickly just kind of coming back to this idea of you know if a catastrophe was to hit like a fire for example um you know, we, we have had some big fires here in the past. People are constantly evacuated, mandatory evacuations in some neighborhoods. Does a homeowner's insurance policy address expenses related to mandatory evacuation? So, for example, like if a wildfire threat was to, to hit and we all had to be evacuated, we could not be let back into our house, but we have to go stay at a hotel and we can't cook the food that's in our fridge. Does a homeowner's insurance policy like reimburse you for any of that? All of it. All of it? Yeah. I didn't know All that. of it. So, important piece of information. In a catastrophe, and I'm only speaking from, you know, Allstate, um, say you have a $2,500 deductible on your homeowner's policy. You get uh, evacuated, and it's considered a catastrophe claim. You're not responsible for that deductible, first and foremost. Okay. Um, and a lot of people think they, they're limited to lodging and food but anything after that claim is filed anything you have to open your wallet for got to go to cvs to get a new toothbrush i got to go to dry cleaning all my work clothes smell like smoke i got to go buy a new wardrobe all that stuff can be reimbursable so it's it's important the main thing is it's important to have a nice relationship with your agent or have an agent that's gonna look out for you more more so than just looking out for your money coming right, in. Right. Um, because there's, there's, like I said, like the mechanic analogy, like you, there's so much, so many moving parts to insurance that a lot of people don't know about. And that can make or break a, you know, a home sale, or it can make or break me writing a policy simply because they didn't know, or right. they heard something that was hogwash. <laughs> hogwash. <laughs> hogwash you know a while ago and um you know they're it's stuck in their mind you know yeah, yeah. you know because people like whatever horror stories they do have it gets stuck up here right. and like you or, know changes have been made right yeah or they see something online and just believe it for face value that right. you know yeah it does yeah that's interesting i didn't know that so that's good to know um again guys Derek beeler all state insurance agency Owns his own place in Galita on Cairo Real. What's the address again? 5715 Cairo 5715. Where can they just show up at the office, make an appointment? How do they get a hold of you, man? Uh, they can call the office 805-685-7383. They can shoot me an email. They can just Google Derek Beeler and uh, my Set website. Up a consult? Yep. And my, my website will pop up. They can see my reviews. Um, you look over what, if they're not insured through you guys, you look over what they, their, their current insurance policy and see if right. you could do it better or where they're not I tell, I, tell, I tell them, just send me your coverages, um, cross out, you know, black out your premium. 
okay. know, a lot I of like people that. are a lot of people are reluctant to like, oh well, he's just gonna see how much I'm paying and he's gonna try to beat that and compromise my coverage. Ooh. I don't care about what you're paying. Whatever. I my my agency may be a little bit more, but you're paying for a service. Right. You're paying for someone to look out for you. Look out for you. So and that matters when something happens, right? Of course. It's for the only sure. it's the most important time it matters. Right. I like that. Well, if you guys don't know why this guy's here, it's because we align on a lot of core values of how we run our business. We take care of people, put our clients first, and we're going to be here for the long run. So again, thank you so much for being here and taking the time to kind of educate uh, all of us on some insurance, you know, um, information and, and facts about the state of insurance in California. So until next time, thanks guys. I'm Abel Ramos with Compass, Derek Beeler with Allstate. We'll see you next time. Thank you.